Good morning, welcome to the conversation on Tio West Television Network, your digital first for an African news network. It's good to have you here again. Today's Tuesday and it's the 18th day of May 2021. Things as though the month is running really fast. Yes, we're reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital city. And of course, my name is Adesu Alsi. And my name is Masterful Lajinamo. Good morning, Adesu Alsi. Good morning, Masterful. It's good yeah, to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> All right, with that, we move, you know, straight into bringing you the quote of the day. Yes, that was Scott Belsky with, you know, Tuesday morning motivation for you. It's not just about ideas, it's about bringing the ideas to life. So it's fantastic, beautiful. You can have those beautiful ideas, but you shouldn't stop there. You should, you know, work towards them, put in action. I mean, just having the ideas might not really, really necessarily work, right? Must yeah, work. yeah. Step, just step by step. You always look at me to give, just to yeah. say something. I always want to hear your first <laughs> <laughs> So I... I, I think what Scott is trying to say is it, it goes beyond thinking about it, yeah. you know, dreaming about it and envisioning yourself doing it. Mm -hmm. You have to stick, you have to take that step, mm -hmm. you know, step by step to bring it to fruition. Mm -hmm. So it not just becomes the idea, mm -hmm. but the reality. Merciful really does use motivational speaker's terms. Bring it to fu fruition. You have to. <laughs> I think you should consider a career in motivational speaking, right? Really. Okay, I will. <laughs> All right, moving straight into development across Africa. Starting from here in Nigeria, where the Vice President of Nigeria, Yemio Shibaju, has said he is not in any way connected to the news revealing his intention to contest for president in 2023. This comes after a website, supportoshibaju.ng, is seen in WhatsApp groups, which hinted that he has declared his intention underneath. Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media and Publicity, Office of the Vice President, Lao Lua Kande, revealed in a re press release obtained by Tio West News on Monday. The attention of the office of the vice president has been drawn to a website uh, that support shibanjo.ng that is calling on Nigerians to join a volunteer group mobilizing support for Professor Yemi Oshibanjo ahead of the 2023 presidential election. Details of this website and the solicitation of the group are currently trending on WhatsApp with a suggestion that Professor Oshibanjo has quietly declared interest in the 2023 election. He therefore asked that people desist from such unhelpful trend, noting that it is a per permutation meant for distraction amidst the challenges confronting the country. All right, moving on to the Democratic Republic of Congo, where the DRC president's son, Denis Sasu Nguesso, appointed son minister. Denis Sasu Nguesso, son of the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo's president, has been chosen as minister in a newly appointed government. The move comes after the previous government resigned early May in what is a procedural move after Sasso Nguesso's win in March election. According to an official statement read on public television on Saturday night by the Prime Minister Anatole Koloné Makoso, the new cabinet lineup has 36 members, including four ministers and eight women. Uh, the President's son will head a newly created Ministry of International Cooperation and Public-Private Partnerships. Okay, coming back to here in Nigeria, where um, the former interim chairman of the All Progressive Congress, that's the APC chief, B.C. Akande, has convened a meeting with Southwest APC governors, which will hold at Lagos House Marina on Sunday, May 23rd, 2021. The invite with the subject, Review of State of Nation, did not disclose the agenda of the meeting. Expected at the meeting are Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Gwajabiamila, National Leader of the APC, Bola Tinubu, Lagos State Governor, Babajide Somwulu, Ogun State Governor, Dapo Abiojun, Governor, Boye Gaugetola of Oshun State, and Undo State Governor, Rosimi Akiridolu. Others include a Kizi State Governor, that's Kayode Fayemi, who doubles as the Chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum. The Chairman, Police Service Commission, Musli Smith, a former Chief of Defence Staff, General Alani Akinriade, and former APC Southwest Vice Chairman, Pius Akinyelure. The invite read in part, notice of meeting, a lot has happened in our country since the last time we met. I hereby formally invite you for a meeting on the state of the nation 
as follows. Date, Sunday, May 23rd, 2021. Time, 2 p.m., venue Lagos House Marina, Lagos. Subject, review of the State of Nation. In light of the World Hypertension Day, our experts are advocating routine medical checkup to stay healthy. As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to commemorate the 2021 International Day of Hypertension, experts in the medical line advice has been given to all and sundry to ensure routine medical checkup is observed as many believe that hypertension is often asymptomatic and can appear as a life-threatening ailment capable of bringing the strongest human down with stroke or acute heart failure. According to the expert, hypertension cannot be taken for granted and lifestyle change by embracing wellness as a part of the community is the best bet to avoid wide-scale hypertension epidemic. The theme for 2021 World Hypertension Day is measure your blood pressure, control it, live longer. World Hypertension Day is observed every year to raise awareness about the silent killer. Measure your blood pressure. I think I like the rhymes. It's catchy. Yeah. People would remember that. Measure your blood pressure. <laughs> okay, talking about, you know, staying healthy, we're going to bring you COVID-19 updates from across Africa right now. Mobile app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live, watch out for the latest update on sport and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV network mobile app, available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV News from Africa by Africans. Being a journalist means in depth analysis that unravels hidden truths that question the status quo and fact checks government. These criminal elements hiding under the cloak of surveillance contractors are the APC elements. Do you have facts to prove that? that? Being a journalist means waking up every day with a burning desire for peace, equity, and justice for all citizens. We're being told that the choice you have is to take the lesser of two evils. It means patriotism, very the prison of objectivity and accountability. It means giving my platform to the masses to discuss issues that matter to them. Some of them, if they bring budget and the budget they lose, some of them sleep. They're going to ask how much you are on. The I have it. Thereby shaping government policies and laws. My name is Osasu Ignatia, and I am the People's Journalist. Welcome back to The Conversation, showing on your digital first Pan-African news network. It's the newspaper review segment of the show, and we begin with Blueprint newspaper for this morning. From the very top, despite massive workers' protests, Aerofire insists no going back. And we have a couple of headlines on that story. The first, over 50,000 workers sacked since 2017. That's coming from the NLC. And um, no retreat, no surrender coming from Ayuba Waba, and all of this can be found on page 6 of the BP newspaper. Uh, we see National Assembly moves to legalize marijuana. The details of that is on page 15. Just besides that story, investors threaten di divestment over federal government FTZ reform. Um, that can be found on page 22. The very obvious headline there, the banner headline, ban on open grazing, Tambual Bela Fentiri, other PDP governors back southern colleagues um, insist on ranching seek devolution of powers to state acf urges revival of grazing reserves seek amendment to ECOWAS protocol on cattle movement and we can get out on page six under the picture of the day i have not declared interest in 2023 presidential race that's coming from the vice president of nigeria yemi Oshimbajo, and that can be found on page five 
INEC meets Rex tomorrow over a tax on Enugu office others. Uh, on page 5 also, gunmen abduct Unijaw's female professor and husband, and that can be found on page 20. Uh, EFCC arrest ex Quara Governor Ahmed over alleged 9 billionaire fraud. Uh, we can get that on page 20 as well. And then the last headline is working 55 hours or more weekly, dangerous to health. That's coming from the WHO. Okay, straight into the Daily Trust newspaper. Um, the very first headline there says, Outrage over moves to shift APC convention. That story is on page 22. ACF back Southern Governor says open grazing must end. You can find that one on page 3. Palestinian death toll hits 200 as attacks enter second week. Uh, that's on page 36. The banner headline on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning says NLC strike grounds Kaduna as El Rafai remains adamant. Four riders on that headline. The first one says residents stranded, banks, hospitals, schools shut. Business owners, others grown over power outage. IGP beefs up highway security as workers ground trains. State's $2 trillion economy struggles with shutdown. Uh, you can find that on page 5, 6, and 16 of the Daily Trust newspaper. And then just underneath the picture of the day where we see the different, you know, um, protests and strike actions ongoing in Kaduna State. The shocking story of Igbo Muslims and why they are going north. Um, Southwest governors Gwajabiami Latinibu meet over agitations. Alleged 9 billion naira fraud, EFCC grills ex Quara governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed. Nigerian firms wins $100 million Facebook grant. And that's us on page 17 of the Daily Trust newspaper. And over to the Daily Times newspaper from the very top as always. Working for long hours can result in serious health hazard. Mm. That's a report uh, that we read previously in one of the newspapers. The right under that story says 745,000 people die from stroke heart disease. And we can get the details of that on page 5 of the Daily Times. The um, banner headline there says military want two billion dollars yearly we can get it just about on page two and the picture of the day there the chief of defense staff general Loki rabo on the that we see cement dangote cement restates commitment to closing demand supply gap as factory nears completion mm. uh, all of that can be found on page 24 and talking about pdp governors meeting the governors meet and back southern colleagues want power devolution state police others pdp governors meet back southern colleagues and the one power devolution, state police, others. All of that can be found on page two. And the last headline that's on page three right there is talking about the Kaduna strike. The NLC strike grounds Kaduna as banks, schools, airport, tra train station, electricity, others shut down. Hmm. All of that can be found on the Daily Times newspaper. To the Nigerian News Direct, um, EFCC NAB's ex-governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed over a left 9 billion hour corruption scandal. That's the first headline on the Nigerian News Direct and it's on page 2. Beside that, Dangote Cement vows to demand to close demand supply gap. That's on page 3. CAC, a point of success. Um, still on page 2. That's um, coming from the Director General, BPS Hour. And the banner headline on the Nigerian News Direct this morning, Ibadan Accord. PDP governors back agitation for restructuring, open grazing. Um, the only writer on that as Thursday is PDP meeting sheer waste of time. That's coming from the All Progressive Congress. And you can find that on page two as well. And then just underneath the first picture of the day, Kaduna workers strike. IGP assures safety on Kaduna Abuja Expressway. That is also, that's on page three. No crisis in Ilefe, Modakeke. That's coming from the commissioner. Page 23, that's where you can find that story. And then the last one on the Nigerian News Direct says, we'll make Lagos major tourism destination in Africa. That is coming from the Lagos State Governor, and you can find that or read up on that on page 3 of the Nigerian News Direct. The last national daily for this morning on the newspaper review segment is the Business Day. And the very obvious headline, the, the banner headline, Buhari security spend highest ever, yet Nigerians more terrified. And the details of that can be found on page four. And just on the top of the Business Day newspaper, you can monitor the market right there. Uh, just beside the banner headline, we see why Nigeria's inflation slows first time in two years. And um, all of that can be found on page four uh, of the Business Day newspaper. And that was all the newspaper we have for you for this morning. Uh, you can just get yourself a copy and read about all the stories we've read about from the front pages of all the newspapers for this morning. Yes, we'll go on a short break now. And when we return, we will be taking you through what's trending on social media to stay.
Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us and the conversation this morning. So we'll move straight into what is trending on social media. Yes, it's about that time where I tell you what made it to the top of the trend table in the last 24 hours across all social media platforms. But before we get into all of that, you know, whenever I talk about social media, I always, always implore and enjoin you to follow TOS TV Network across all social media platforms. That's TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to TOS TV Network on YouTube so you do not miss out or you're not left out of anything. You can also just stream the conversation on every of our program on www.tostvnetwork.com. Okay, back into, you know, what has been trending on social media. So the hashtag ordinary president has been trending on Twitter, social media basically in the last 24 hours. So for those of you who don't know who the ordinary president um, is, he's um, a TV radio presenter. He's actually Ahmed Issa of Brekater Radio, um, human rights radio, I think, but it's, it's, it's a Brekater family, some sort of, uh, you know, I think it's a live TV show, radio show, radio TV show, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so people usually just comes, bring human rights issues to him, and he just, you know, helps, you know, find solution to them. And so it's very well trusted, and he always just get all of those um, issues every now and then. So something happened recently. So a video of him circulating on social media um, saw him physically assault um, a woman who supposedly or allegedly, you know, set a, a young girl on fire or ablaze because apparently she, can, she, she, said, she, she said the girl, the little girl is a witch and then so to punish her or something, she tied her up and set her ablaze. So why, you know, during the, the investigation or during the interview by, you know, Ahmed Hisa, he literally slapped, you know, the, the woman who he was interviewing and that caused some sort of discussion, controversy, conversation on social media and I'm going to read that out to you. Uh, the first one is from at Abuja underscore SK. Omar, I don't care what you guys are saying. Ordinary president of Brekata Radio may have acted unprofessionally on this particular case. But if you were in his shoes and you're sure you wouldn't do the same, take him to court. Ahmed still remains one of the most honorable men in Nigeria. Um, the next one is from at successful Fabul. Faboboki. I have followed Ahmed Isa, the honorary president, for years now. I have learned quite a lot from him. One thing I can say is he really needs to work on his emotions. Overall, he's a good man who has done more for Nigerians than any other Nigerian I know, president inclusive. Um, at I am the brightest says, if the person, ordinary president Ahmed Isa slapped was a fellow man like him, the human rights narrative wouldn't have come up and there'll be no debate if it was right for slapping her or not. But it's a woman and the gospel of right activist is here. Well, what do I know? The last um, tweet here says, this country is how it is because we don't have more people like ordinary president Ahmed Hisa who are ready to slap sense into you people. That slap is more justice than most Nigerians ever had. So miss me with that fox outrage I beg. Free my dog. So, you saw the way I looked at Merciful. Merciful had an opinion earlier on when we were talking about this. And I just want him to, you know, just, you know, quickly just give us your yeah, opinion on this. Okay, what yes. Um, we should know that um, before, we are, before we are position holders, before we have offices, we are first human mm -hmm. and we have emotions. Mm -hmm. So, yes, once in a while, our emotions find a way to just come out either in our line of work mm. uh, or in whatever we do. But let's understand the fact that if you're representing something, if you are representing uh, a human rights activist, if you're representing someone who stands for humanity, you should be able to you know, ensure that you're always professional at all times. Now, there's the rule of law in the country, mm -hmm. there's policies, there's procedures. Mm -hmm. When someone has been found uh, um, um, when someone was found uh, may, may be alleged to have done something, a mm -hmm. suspect, mm -hmm. the person is being tried, is arrested, mm -hmm. and you know all, all the processes happen. Mm -hmm. But the essence of interviews is to listen mm -hmm. and hear people's opinion. Mm -hmm. That's why we grant interviews. That's why we have the cameras, the microphones, to get what you have to say to, so people can see. So on no account, it's, it's, it's normal for you, to, you know, air your, to air your grievances and everything, but... Getting physical is totally unprofessional. And mm. I understand, yes, there's so much respect for him. People are saying, look, he has so much doing on people, yes. But I think if we should meet him and touch base with him and say, look, I think he would tell you he's sorry. Because mm. it's actually a normal thing. Yes, and I, I, definitely. He probably mm -hmm. is sorry. Or probably isn't, right? Probably isn't. Yes, because 
this is a human right issue basically it's a human right uh, issue you understand and, and it's and very and wrong it's it's I, it's naive I, it's I, barbaric okay of, for for someone to have have done that now it's not just done a human what? it's Set a child a human, okay. setting someone on fire okay that is that's some that's something that that is worth taking the person to prison I, I don't even know why there's so much charade on top of it like i see they're celebrating or something okay. granting an interview the person was being in prison Okay. And ask questions. Exactly. Yeah? So, but in the, the thing, police station. The thing is, the mm -hmm. thing, the thing is, I, I do understand your standpoint. Everybody would say, "Oh, it's unprofessional." But sometimes, sometimes the humanity in you just takes over. You forget professionalism. You see someone, you see a little girl, and then you, you're trying to find out why did you do this to this person, and the person has nothing to tell you, and then you don't even see remorse. Sometimes the humanity in you takes over, and you just want to, you know. That's why lots of persons take laws into the end, which is absolutely wrong. Very, Very wrong. wrong. But yes. But the thing is my, my standpoint here is i would have asked you what would you have done in that instance but you might not even really know what you would have done in that instance i was right? not going to be in that instance in the exactly first place. so you might not even know what you would have done if you were in that shoes but, but my, if my, i was in that shoes is, if yeah. i was in that shoes if i was if, if, if i was if they brought that case to me mm. i'll take the case to a police station i'm not even going to ask we have trained investigators we have people who we you can't we have people who but, ask but the right wait, questions. But wait, the thing is, I, mm -hmm. I, I think you forget what they actually do on that platform, what that platform is actually used for. A lot of people really just trust him to handle all of this case. To mediate, so they, to mediate, not yes, handle, per, per se. Mediating is handling it to an extent. I think, so we just forget. The thing is, I'm, I don't have an opinion as to um, what he should have done, what he did wrong, or who was wrong, or who was right, right? Because I know that sentiment might be included and then a lot of person might say oh that's a woman if it was a man maybe wouldn't have been talking about the that's, same thing that's, so there's always going to yeah. be a sentiment so i may not have an opinion but what i have an opinion is people are forgetting that a little girl was set ablaze and i think they're focusing on what they shouldn't be focusing on they're not for they're not that forgetting. is my opinion nobody will forget that it. is the that only is a thing. very odd unusual thing you know in this 21st century it's like we're shifting focus from what actually happened and just focusing on this man did wrong wait what about the little girl that was set ablaze because you supposedly think she's the witch yeah we're supposed that to take is, her to prison. exactly that is where my focus is on so basically we all want to say how many said did wrong okay but take the focus back to where it's supposed to be that is, you know, where my stand is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it for what's training on social media. I would really like to hear your perspective of this one. So please just drop a comment, you know, comment or whatever on our social media platforms. That's TOS Media Talk on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Let us know what you think. Okay, so it's about that time where we go on a break to bring you the big story. Welcome back to The Conversation, showing on your digital first Pan-African news network. That is the US television. Don't forget, you can always be a part of it. Your comments, concerns, opinions on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at TOS TV Network. And of course, you know, subscribe to our YouTube so you do not miss, you do not miss out on amazing content. And of course, I'm live streaming the program on our website, www.tostvnetwork.com. It's the big story, the crux of The Conversation Show. And this morning, we're talking about restructuring in Nigeria. And restructuring means different things to different people at different times. Uh, Nigerians across ethnic, political, and religious divides have now joined the call for the restructuring of the country. Now, some have said the precarious security situation the nation has faced and found itself in recent times, uh, the manifest failure of government at the center have uh, necessitated the urgent need to carry out the restructuring. Um, within the last few years, agitation for the restructuring of Nigeria has been on the rise. And currently in Nigeria, it is believed that in some quarters, that the lopsided structure of the country and the military imposed 1999 constitution were responsible for the nation's numerous problems. And this has fueled national mistrust among the various component units. Now, to join us this morning on the show to explore these options and more, our via telephone is Ulubumi. Aya Tunji, the convener of the, of the policy roundtable, he speaks to us from Abuja. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, can you hear me, you? please? I'm yes, very we can fine. hear you. Very good morning, fine. Mr. Tunji. Can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you clearly. Oh, great. Can Thank you, hear you. Thank you for joining us on the show this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, what is, does it even mean to say we're calling for restructuring? All right, right. Um, the most abused word currently now in Nigeria, to me, is the word restructuring. Hmm. You know, it's hard to build a nation, but it's not as hard as we make it seem in this part of the world, right? And call it restructuring, reconfiguration, redesign, remodeling, it's all the same. Mm. However, the problem is we do not have a wholesome or a holistic document that probably interprets this to the basic form. So an average Nigerian knows what the word restructuring means. When you talk of devolution of powers to subnational governments, uh, regional policing, fiscal federalism, to me that's what restructuring means, right? Mm. It means practicing a very, very holistic and brilliant federal system. Not the one we have on paper. I would say that Nigeria operates a unitary system instead of a federal system because all the central powers, all the major powers are concentrated in the federal government. You have states, uh, you have governors of states trying to call the IGP before they can fix security solutions in their states. You have um, state governments begging uh, uh, cap in hands at the end of every month to borrow, to take money from the federal government to be able to serve their state. Nothing actually works in the federal system like that, you know. Uh, uh, the powers of governors, of subnational governments, that state governments, are really too uh, more on paper mm. than physically. So that, that that's not a federal system. So when people say restructuring or what should be restructuring is practicing federalism mm. in its holistic or natural form. Uh, I've been every trapping source of uh, justice in the system. You know, it was the late um, Usman Danfodio that said that uh, a nation can survive unbelief, but a nation uh, cannot survive injustice. Mm. Uh, Martin Luther King also said, that the moral arm of the universe bends towards justice. And what you find in Nigeria currently is people seeking for something as basic as justice. Mm. You know, we, we, we cannot continue to have a system where uh, some states in the north ban alcohol, for example, and then some states in the south uh, permit the sale of alcohol and they get VAT and tax on it. But then the same tax is being shared by everybody. If you really want the tax, why ban the product? So, uh, uh, to be equal, there's a need to restructure, to reconfigure this whole design. Mm -hmm. For us to sit at the table and have a constitutional reconfiguration of the same practice that we practice today. Mm. Thank you. Okay, so basically, personally, you don't think we need restructuring in Nigeria? I think we need restructuring. But the meaning we give to the ones we give now is what I have a problem with. Okay. We need restructuring. We, we really need to we think this this marriage basically i i i think we really need to reconstruct mm. the whole setting i believe that okay so but do you think in your opinion do we have the legal framework to go about you know restructuring or every other thing you spoke yeah, you spoke about doing the configuration and all of that do you think we have the legal framework to do all of that constitutionally we we operate a federal system in nigeria mm. but practically i would say we operate uh, a unitary system. Mm. There have been several arguments made that, that have made a strong case for taking the bull by the ones and re-engineering Nigeria. But then, all Nigerians should reflect and act on these arguments in our collective self-interest, you know. I believe that just like the Southern governors at this 12th resolution, we have to sit as a country and renegotiate these things. Regions or let me say subnational governments need to control their resources and they send their uh, parts to the federal government. There's a need for state policing. So the, the security situation in this country is overwhelming. The federal mm -hmm. government cannot take it alone. You know, sure. governors can, should be able to have their police system in check. You know, okay, uh, um, for example, in Osho, something is happening in Ife. The governor should be able to call the commissioner of police mm -hmm. to go there directly. But currently, the governor cannot because the IGP answers to the president. Mm -hmm. So the kind of security we have in this country is too, uh, how do I put the bureaucratic system is choking. And if we want solutions, we need to overhaul the system. And overhauling the system means we have to restructure. 
more powers would have to be given to subnational governments instead of politicizing everything. Mm. You know, recently the People's Democratic Party told to, to devolve power to subnational governments. And people would say, power, why didn't you do it? So that's what I call the process. But citizens are suffering. There's a need to renegotiate that, basically. So we have the mass, we have the Nigerians who are at the receiving end of all of this. What is your take, what is your opinion, your advice for Nigerians who every day keep calling for restructuring of Nigeria? Well, the constitution said, the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Mm. And basically to me, I'm a student of legacy studies. Okay. Dr. Akin Baba made a very, very foremost policy teacher in this country will say, that is the primary purpose of any government at all. If you fail in that, you have failed in all. Hmm. And sincerely, irrespective of the party each of them belongs to, the country is on the brink of, on the brink of collapse. Yeah. Uh, um, before now, there have been spaces, though with no security, the security uh, situation didn't start now. But then before now, people can travel in the south, some southern uh, parts of the country. But now, who does travel by road? Hmm. And still, we are not having these conversations. Fiscal federalism till today. If there was a time in this country that a state in this in, the, in this country got less than eight hundred thousand naira as allocation from the federal government, because after removal of debt and all that, so uh, what 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 faith do you leave for the citizens? But if that state controls its own its own natural resources, they are to manage their own IGL and probably send a little to the federal government. I don't think that would be the case. Sincerely. The citizens are the receiving end of this whole, of this whole uh, politicization of the process. Mm. You know, the semi president, or let's say the National Assembly, is saying uh, state governments should restructure their state first and fix their state before they talk to the federal government. But, like it or not, this, 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 the, the truth of the matter is without the federal government, without the presidency, quote and unquote, most of these things are impossible. Possible. If they want to meet and the IGP directs, currently the IGP has directed that no police should follow VIPs to the southeast. And that leaves them vulnerable. That's to show the powers that are concentrated in the top echelon of the police force. Mm -hmm. Now, if states have their own uh, uh, security forces, I don't think there will be a problem with uh, most of these things. Okay. Security is too big to be concentrated in the arms of one body. Mm -hmm. And that is, citizens are really. Uh, at the receiving end. Most of these elites are not the ones that will suffer. If you think balls, now everybody goes to meet around Ahmed Airport or Nandia Azuku Airport. But citizens, vulnerable citizens are the ones at the receiving end. And I really beg, I want to use this opportunity to actually push, that instead of politicizing this issue, most of these elected representatives should read that part of the constitution that says the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Thank mm. you. Okay, so... Before we let you go, reiterating your side of the divide, that the side of the divide that you're on, what would be your three-point agenda if you were to prefer solution to, you know, the security terms, issues and challenges that we're faced with in Nigeria at this point? First of all, there should be regional police and subnational policy mm -hmm. that would have a, that would have constitutional provision for overriding security powers for the centre to the armed forces, you know. Mm -hmm. Second of all, the, 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 the concept of balance of powers between subnational governments or regions and the center should be deliberately designed. Like there should be a clear court powers of subnational governments. Sorry, I call them subnational governments. In the federal system, that's what they should actually go by states and the federal government. The, the, this whole thing that we have practiced for how many years? 60 years? It's, it's sincerely not working. Nobody is calling for, I'm not even a secessionist right now. Mm. But this practice, it, the, 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 there's a quote that says, I, I can't remember very clearly now, that if you keep trying the same thing the same way, mm. you know, you're probably, uh, you expect the, the, the different result, then you're a fool. We have continually tried this very costly, unmanageable, unsustainable federal system, and it's not working. Mm. Mm. Um, but the amount of powers and monies and financial strength the federal had in to muzzle any state. So, yeah. 
to have regions and some national governments control their natural resources. And sincerely, that is what I think uh, this whole uh, reconstruction and whatever they call it goes by. People are saying we should uh, re-amend or probably expunge the constitution of the, or, or the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And my question has always been, if we, we, we expunge the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, then pending the time where we have another constitution, what would we be using? The state descendants to a complete state of anarchy. I do not believe that. I believe we have to sit or probably the state that the federal government should go back to the recommendations made in 2014 confirmed. But mm -hmm. politics will not let most of these leaders submit their egos to. Those are, if, if, if you read the most of the resolutions, I took time to go through the 2014 confirmed recommendations, right? Mm -hmm. If you read through most of the recommendations, they even recommended that we practice a unicameral legislature. Mm -hmm. but bicameral legislature is too costly. Too, too costly. We have, the, we have the House of Reps, 300 plus, the Senate 409,000. So I feel that the best thing now, even president, for example, is to visit the 2014 confirmed report right. and implement the implementables, quote and unquote, there. All thank right. you. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Olubimi, for joining us on the show this morning. It's been a very insightful moment, I must say. And we look forward to having more of you on our shows, okay? Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. My pleasure. All right. Thank you so much, viewers, for staying tuned to the conversation. Uh, a very entertaining, informative, and educative show, I must say. Mm -hmm. Right? The days were. Of course. Of course. Always. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Don't forget, you can always be a part of it. Your opinions, contributions can, you know, be written on all our social media platforms. Just write us and, you know, just at us at TOS TV Network, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We'll be more than happy to receive your comments, you know, so we can just go on with the show. Thank you so much for watching. I am Merciful Ginamore. And of course, I am a day so well. See you. Thank you and good morning.